Applying for residency is confusing and time-consuming, and your future rests on having the best application possible. Applying for residency with the Electronic Residency Application Service ERAS, can be stressful, so in today's video, I'm going to go through a timeline from your third year of medical school right up to match day, telling you what you need to know and do at each stage and explaining the entire match process. <laughs> Before we begin, hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an Admissions Associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you with your residency application, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. As a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video if you're looking to navigate quickly to specific sections of the video. So let's get right into the application timeline. In your third year of medical school between September to May, you should start developing your CV and this should be more detailed than a standard resume and takes time to get just right. You'll be listing your work and volunteer experiences and other highlights of your medical career. Did you get a paper published? Make sure to add it to your CV. Keeping an up-to-date CV is essential and makes getting recommendation letters from doctors easy. At this time, it might be a good idea to start looking at the match outcomes for specialties. You can compare these qualifications and match rates for each specialty. This will help you get a good idea of what specialties might require. Knowing what score you will need on exams and how many letters you will need in which specialty will improve your success. It's never too early to get started on your residency personal statement. Make notes of interesting cases you see or memorable patients. Getting ideas early on will keep you from stressing as more deadlines approach and make sure you review residency personal statement examples to help get you started. If you're still feeling nervous about your personal statement, you may feel more confident reviewing it and editing it with the help of an advisor. Don't be afraid to get help. Have as many people as you can edit and review your statement. This is also a good time to research residency and career planning by reviewing the AMA's compilation of residency programs and physician workforce data. So now between June and August, this is the summer before your last year and it's when you should complete your ERAS ap application via the AAMC. It's at this time that you should also be specifying the list of programs that you'll plan on applying to and where your completed application will ultimately be sent. It's time to get your hands on your own personal ERAS token from the registrar's office. After you've received your token, click the register button on the My ERAS and complete the application carefully and diligently as you can only register once. Next, you should download the My ERAS Residency User Guide. Our Navigating ERAS, the Definitive Guide and My ERAS Residency User Guide will be your two best resources as you navigate this process. Make sure to register with the NRMP for the main residency match. I'll include a link to this in the description of this video. If you're interested in neurology, pediatric neurology, ophthalmology, or urology, make sure that you register for early match. Have you compiled a list of faculty members that you hope to write you a letter of, re of recommendation? If not, now is the time to do so. Okay, so now when you're in your fourth year of medical school between September and October, this is the first date to certify and submit your ERAS application, which is usually at the start of September. Once you certify this, you can't edit it. It's only done once and it's final and no changes can be made once it's certified and submitted. Programs can't access your application until mid-September. All applications submitted before the mid-September date get time stamped for the same date. And now is when you should start doing interview preparation. Have you taken the step two? If not, you should strongly consider effectively utilizing your time to prepare for it starting now. Make sure you're aware of deadlines. Step two clinical skills and clinical knowledge deadlines are usually at the end of December. The step two clinical skills exam is only administered in five cities in the US. 
you want to schedule it as soon as possible to ensure that you get a seat at your preferred location. So now we're at October to December in our application timeline. This is where residency interviews will begin. As well, medical student performance evaluations, MSPE, are released early in October. You should now print off the residency preference exercise if you sign in and click on the provided link under M4 to compare and contrast the programs that you're interested in. January is important for those who applied for early match as deadlines are usually set at this time. Now we're between January and February. Your interview should be wrapping up and now it's time for your rank order list. Log into NRMP and start creating your list. In March, it's match day. NRMP will email you with your results and usually Friday they will tell you where exactly you matched. So now I want to talk about what is the main match and how it works. The main match is the method by which the National Resident Matching Program, NRMP, facilitates and organizes the application process. Thousands of residency applicants complete, compete for residency spots offered throughout America. Applicants will use the ERAS database to apply to residency programs of interest. Programs will then respond to applicants by inviting them for interviews during the fall and winter of their fourth or final year of medical school. Once interview season has come to an end, applicants will create and submit a rank order list of programs that they would accept a contract with. Programs will also submit a rank order list of applicants that they would like to accept as residents. The main match algorithm plays matchmaker in setting up applicants and programs. The Monday of match week, residency hopefuls are notified whether or not they have matched, but not to which program they have matched to. For applicants who are not successful in matching, residency positions which remain unfilled are made available for applicants to attempt to secure before the official match day results are released. Students are notified on Friday of where they have matched to. So a common question we get asked is, how do I go about making an informed specialty decision? Always keep in mind that med school is your time to explore various fields and specialties in the world of medicine. Take the time to be honest with yourself regarding your likes and dislikes. Each specialty has its own pros and cons. Make notes of these as you are exposed to them during electives, rotations, clinicals, and research. Be sure you're creating a pros and cons list for each specialty you're interested in. Also, consider where you want to live in the future and the type of practice that you want to have. Certain areas are in need of different specialties. This may factor into your decision. If you're undecided between a few specialties, spend more time on rotations with these doctors. Emerge yourself in the field to get a feel of what life would be like with this specialty. Don't be afraid of consulting doctors and your advisor as they are also valuable resources to use. Clerkship. So there are advantages of setting up clerkships and they may give you a competitive edge. Students are given the option of pursuing a sub-internship and additional elective clerkships during the end of their third year and the beginning of fourth year. You should take advantage of this opportunity to work more closely with patients, residents, and attendings. These electives and internships are your chance to really stand out and show your interest in the field. Showing dedication to the field like family medicine is very important come interview season. Elective clerkships are an ideal time to request those letters of recommendation from attendings. Letters of recommendation can be influential in securing interviews. They give residency programs an in-depth look at who you are as a candidate. Your letter writer should be someone who has seen your performance in clinicals and has knowledge of your skills. Give your writer enough time to get to know you before you ask for a letter. Asking the first day is too soon, but waiting until the last day is too late. Let them know during your rotation that you would appreciate a letter from them so they have time to compose the letter of recommendation. Remember, they are physicians with crazy schedules, so giving them a copy of your CV or personal statement will assist them in writing a really good letter of recommendation. If a faculty member offers to write you a letter of recommendation before you have the chance to request one and they appear to be excited to take the time to write you a letter of recommendation, seize the opportunity. What if you don't know who to ask? Well, letters of recommendation should be written by faculty members who know you the best. So those who have worked with you, those who have observed you throughout your countless clinical situations and have watched you shine, especially under pressure. 
The better a faculty member knows you, the stronger and more impactful a letter will be in supplementing your application. Ensure that at least two of your letters are written by faculty members that work within your specialty of interest as they will be able to best describe why you would be a perfect fit for the specialty. Having the correct number of letters can be tricky. Less is definitely more in the case of letters of recommendation, so don't go overboard. If a program is asking for three letters of recommendation, providing them with five will only hurt your application. Submitting three exceptional letters will be your best bet in impressing committee members during application and interview season. Now for your CV. In addition to your letters of recommendation, your CV is the place to show your strengths. Highlight attributes that make you stand out as a talented and intelligent applicant that you are. Keep your CV concise and include information that will showcase your accomplishments. Your CV should include the following sections education and research background, any applicable certifications or licenses that you've obtained, your work experiences, awards and achievements, and languages that you're fluent in and applicable skills. When in doubt, keep it simple. Maintain the balance between professionalism and relevance. Be sure to use action words to engage the reader. Making your CV interesting will simultaneously make it memorable to the committee member that's reviewing it. A little bit about your personal statement. Your personal statement allows you to connect with committee members on a personal and professional level. There are thousands of students in your position attempting to convince committee members that they are a perfect fit for their program. Use your personal statement as a marketing tool. Make yourself known to the committee and let them know why you would be the best addition to their program. Talk about your interests in the field and why you're pursuing research. Include research experiences, outside interests, or medical experiences that influence your decision to enter this field. Also tell them what you are looking for in a program. Let them know if you are passionate about research or would love to work in underserved communities. State your career goals and how you plan to apply your residency training to future pursuits. Be very careful not to reiterate your CV to them. Use this space for information that is not anywhere else in your application. You don't need to waste space by telling them why you wanted to become a doctor. You really should try to keep this to one page around 600 to 800 words. Space is precious, so this should be about you and your relationship to the specialty you choose and how you would thrive at their program. Finally, make sure that you check your work. Use a professional proofreader, get another proofreader, and when you're happy with how everything looks, get another proofreader. You have to be open to critique and don't be afraid of multiple drafts. It takes a lot of time to get this statement right. So when it comes to scheduling your interviews, this can be very stressful and difficult. Since your first interviews will prove to be your most stressful and the most challenging, make sure to schedule your most important interviews, so with the programs that you hope to impress the most, in the middle of your interviews. Your first interviews will serve as practice runs as you get the feel for them. Try and schedule your interviews for programs that you're not too high on your list towards the end as it's also inevitable that you will grow tired at the tail end of the interview trail. Preparing for the interview in advance is important. Researching programs for information about their location, population demographics, and patient populations will help you understand what they're looking for in a candidate. Plus, it will help you create questions to ask them during the interview. Your interview will be your chance to meet the programs in person, so make that first impression count. Professionalism is key. From the time you walk in the door until the time you get into your car to leave, you are representing yourself as a potential physician at their hospital. Be nice and friendly to everyone you meet and dress professionally in neutral colors. When you have completed your interviews, you will have to rank the programs. Factors to consider are the programs that you're willing to attend, the location of the program, the overall work environment, personalities of affiliated residents, and financial commitments. Be sure to rank all programs that you're willing to attend in the order that you want to attend them. There's no benefit whatsoever to having a short ranking list, so make sure you rank all programs. Okay, matching versus not matching. Match week begins on a Monday when applicants are notified of whether or not they have matched, but they are not told which program they have matched to. Applicants who have not been successful in matching will have the opportunity to match into these unfilled positions 
through the Supplemental Offer and Acceptance Program, or SOAP. There are three rounds of SOAP where you will apply to the available programs with your already completed ERAS profile. The programs will contact you if they would like to video call or phone interview you. They will then make a list of students and if you match, you will be notified. If not, you will continue on to the next round of SOAP until it concludes on the Thursday of Match Week. Matched candidates are told on Friday where they have matched to. Your school might have a certain ceremony where they give you a letter telling you where you matched. Enjoy this time because you've earned it. So hopefully this video will serve as a tool for you to reference when you are applying to residency. So please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Are you stuck with filling out a section in ERAS? Do you have more questions about how the residency match works? Let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to you with my recommendations. If you'd like us to help you with your residency application, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time.